Ranked by many as one of the greatest heavyweights in boxing history, by the time Larry Holmes finally hung up the gloves in 2002, he had amassed a staggering 69 wins spanning his 30-year-long career, with a respectable 44 wins coming by way of knockout. Possessing a world-renowned left jab, formidable punching power, and undeniable ring generalship, two-time world champion Holmes successfully defended his title 20 times, an accomplishment that rightfully places him in the discussion as one of the sport's all-time greats. After just 20 years since his last professional bout, we take a look back at the forgotten power of heavyweight boxing legend Larry Holmes. Entering the ring with 16 wins tallied on his unbeaten slate, Holmes took on the bolus bear Rodney Bobak on the undercard of Muhammad Ali's rubber match against Joe Frazier in Manila. Patiently boxing behind a vicious, piston-like left jab, fired up Holmes picked up the pace in the sixth, stopping his vastly more experienced opponent on his feet with a thunderous right hand in the closing seconds of the round. Not yet. In the heavyweight ranks, anything can happen. The last minute, Bobby could throw a wild looping punch. Be very lucky. Well, he was roughed again. He's in trouble now. And the referee is going to stop it. Referee Enrique Jimenez. decision on behalf of the referee. Picking up his 17th professional win with an exciting highlight reel finish in his most high-profile bout to date, the Easton Assassin's incredible, illustrious career was fully underway. Six months on from winning the WBC title in a split-decision victory over Ken Norton, Holmes faced off against Uruguay-based Spaniard Alfredo Evangelista. Softened up by Larry's signature left jab, Evangelista was brutally wiped out with a bludgeoning right hand in the final seconds of the seventh. I don't think there's any question but what he has now realized. He can measure the man, and he is really trying hard to put him away. But he, Well, I think he... Failing to make it back to his feet before the count of 10, the sprawled out Spaniard was counted out by referee Richard Green, securing the champion's first defense of his highly coveted WBC strap. Returning to Vegas to make another routine defense, Larry clashed with unbeaten Puerto Rican contender Asi Ocasio. Showing no respect for the Puerto Rican's power, Holmes steamrolled the shifty, undefeated slickster with ease, flooring Ocasio with a punishing left jab midway through the seventh. To which Ocasio is particularly vulnerable with the head held forward. There's the left, and down went Ocasio. Clearly overmatched and in above his head, Ocasio was smashed to the canvas for a second time following a picture-perfect right hand mere seconds later. Shockingly allowed to continue, the Puerto Rican was immediately floored again with a vicious two-fisted attack. Ocasio fights on. Padilla says, okay. Ocasio, now there's the third knockdown, and that will do it. Showing no mercy for his stumbling foe, Holmes swiftly followed up the knockdown with a merciless three-punch combination, prompting referee Carlos Padilla to belatedly step in and save Ocasio from any further damage. It was a one-sided, brutal beatdown for Holmes, dominating his young contender over seven punishing rounds, eventually ending proceedings in emphatic fashion. Now boasting an impressive 30 wins without defeat, the Eastern Assassin's next victim came in the form of unheralded ex-Marine and Vietnam vet Mike Weaver. Opting to patiently box on the back foot behind his legendary left jab, the coasting 29-year-old champion Holmes was blasted to the canvas with a blistering combination in the fourth, which was incorrectly ruled as a slip by referee Harold Bailey. Forced to display his outlandish resilience and fortitude to battle his way back into the contest multiple times throughout, Holmes abruptly floored his overzealous challenger with a chilling uppercut in the final seconds of the 11th. Wait a minute. 
receiver trying to set him up again. Waver is down from the upper side. Waver is down from the upper side. He has to get up. Waver is out. Good. He may not make it. Seven. Showing incredible toughness to climb back to his feet after such a heavy knockdown, Weaver was finished off less than one minute into the following frame. Weaver's a sitting duck on those ropes. That's all. That's all. It was a flawed but incredibly entertaining performance from Holmes, showing his tremendous heart to battle back and retain his title with another thrilling knockout victory. Six months on from his 11th round elimination of knockout king Ernie Shavers, Larry was back in Vegas to make the sixth defense of the WBC title against unbeaten contender Leroy Jones. Jabbing and moving his way through the first half of the fight, extremely sharp Holmes looked to end matters in the seventh, uncorking a vicious two-fisted barrage in the final seconds of the round, forcing referee Richard Green to intervene and bring a halt to the lopsided beating. And now it's going to be as one-sided as a lynching in the eighth round. shows a bit of compassion if this keeps up because I doubt if Holmes could knock this fellow down. He'll just stop him on his feet. He's throwing some money punches at him. He's leaving him draped yet it's all over and he's draped in the corner like wet laundry there. Poor Leroy Jones. Suffering from a detached retina following the loss, Jones had one more fight before hanging up the gloves in 1982, leaving the sport with a respectable record of 25 wins, one defeat and one draw. After picking up wins over Scott Ledoux, Muhammad Ali, and Trevor Burbick, the Easton assassin took a trip to Detroit to face off against former title holder Leon Spinks. Struggling with Neon Leon's bob and weave style in the opening two rounds, Holmes figured things out in the third, brutally flooring Spinks with a hellacious volley of bombs. Now he's fighting boxing basics. He's scoring that left of the belly hurt Spinks. Spinks is getting it. He hasn't been able get away from the ropes and Holmes is really teeing off on it as a measure you see the left measuring and then the right and then the left and Spinks is ready to go and go swiftly following up the knockdown with a vicious barrage of unanswered punches Holmes left referee Richard Steele no option but to step in and save Spinks from any further punishment the key to this don't lose your head work the opponent don't try to put him away too soon the win would be Larry's 10th consecutive title defense, successfully retaining his belt with another concussive knockout finish, perfectly setting up his much-awaited showdown against unbeaten contender Jerry Cooney. Looking to collect another unbeaten scalp on his path to becoming an all-time great, the Easton assassin took on power-punching, undefeated rising contender Jerry Cooney. Eager to put a beating on the Great White Hope, Holmes got to work immediately, flooring Cooney with a crunching right hand midway through the second. And Cooney took a good right hand from Holmes. He staggers in his back. Cooney is down from the right hand by Larry Holmes. After an eventful 12 rounds of action, including three point deductions for low blows, Holmes finally finished off an exhausted looking Cooney in the closing seconds of the 13th round. Cooney's legs are really wobbly. Cooney's really gone now. He's really gone. Cooney very wobbly in the center of the ring. Takes another right hand. Holmes knows he has his man in trouble. Then another right hand. And that eye is really opened up. Combinations of punches thrown by the champion against Jerry Cooney. This one is all but over. Cooney against the ropes. Mills Lane steps in. He did not really go down. Victor Valley. And Victor Valley is saying no more, I believe. Victor Valley is in the ring saying no more. That's it. It is over. And Mills Lane raises Larry Holmes' hand in victory. So Larry Holmes retains the title. Stepping in and stopping the fight. Adding another highly rated, unbeaten opponent to his impressive resume of top tier opponents, Holmes picked up his 40th career victory. 
Thrown in the deep end by his legendary father, Smoke and Joe, vastly inexperienced Marvis Frazier was handed a crack at the reigning heavyweight champion, Larry Holmes. Deemed to be a gross mismatch by almost everyone aside from his matchmaker father, mega underdog Marvis was laid out two and a half minutes into the opener. Well, last time up, of course, Frazier was in with Joe Bugner. And you know, he beat the big fellow there out of sight in Atlantic City. He didn't have him down. Unexpectedly bouncing back to his feet, Frazier was hammered with a headache-inducing 10 unanswered punches, prompting a belated stoppage from referee Mills Lane. Predictably able to deal with Marvis without issue, Holmes had added another spectacular highlight reel finish to his vast collection of knockout victories. Taking place at Casino Magic in Mississippi on Father's Day of 1996, Holmes, now at the back end of his career, took on big hand Anthony Willis. After playing with his food for the first seven rounds, Larry dispatched the Missouri native with a picture-perfect right hand 60 seconds into the eighth. Adding another sensational one-punch finish to his KO collection, Holmes went on to have five more professional bouts over the following four years before finally calling it a day and retiring from the sport in 2002. With a remarkable record of 69 wins and just six defeats, 